So, I have been playing around with these uh, Starbucks NFC cards and my Flipper Zero. And guess what? As this short video clip explains, uh, I'm actually able to use my Flipper to buy coffee at Starbucks. So, how's that possible? If you have seen my earlier videos about uh, credit cards and contactless payments, you'll learn that I'm explaining that the Flipper Zero is not capable of doing contactless payments in a card terminal. So any video showing that is fake. So how was I, I able to do the payment at Starbucks with my Flipper? Simply because these Starbucks cards are using a standard called MyFair, which is not really a payment certified standard. It's a standard used by for access control systems and, and so on. So in this video, I'm trying to learn more about the such cards and to see what my flipper can do with those cards. But first, a short disclaimer, I will not expose any new threats or vulnerabilities in this video. I will not show how to commit any illegal activities at all. This is only for educational purposes and do only test things on devices that belongs to you. And I do use sources such as academical papers or presentations from public uh, conferences such as the Black Hat and so on as my sources of information. So I'm not exposing anything illegal in these videos. So here I have a couple of uh, of Starbucks NFC cards and as far as I understand they have two purposes. First I can register them on the Starbucks uh, webpage and use a top-up function meaning that I can upload money to some kind of account and use this card when paying for a coffee. The second purpose is uh, probably as a loyalty card so when paying with this card uh, all my transactions are visible in my profile at the Starbucks webpage. Uh, now we get some benefits when using this card, maybe a free cookie or maybe a free coffee after so and so many purchases. So how does this work? Let's scan the card and find out. So let's just scan the first card using the uh, NFC uh, reader in my flipper. And as we can see here, this is actually a standard called the Moifer Ultralight. And as you can see from the details, it exposes my unique identifier of the card. And it also says that it's able to read the different uh, sections or pages of the card. And this is nothing special about this. I can also use my phone for this. So if I go into my NFC tool here, um, let's just read the same card here and as you can see it says the, exactly the same it says the um, my fair ultralight uh, it gives the serial number which is a unique identifier and some other data as well um, so what about the other card uh, this one is uh, i can read again with my flipper And this, uh, now I'm actually masking the unique identifier because this card, uh, this, this particular card I actually am using and I have money on this, so I'll not expose uh, the unique identifier. But you can see this is another standard. This is my for classic 1K. So this got a memory of one kilobytes. And there are also other standards as well in the my fair uh, part. You have my for classic 4K. And you have also the more secure card called the MyFair Desfire cards. So, so probably we should deep dive into the different um, MyFair standards in a separate video. But for now, let's go back to the use case where I'm using my flipper at my local Starbucks. So in this illustration, I'm trying to visualize that I, as a user, I can create an account at the... Um, web shop of, uh, of Starbucks and I can also register my coffee card let's say that my just for simplicity that my user identifier my unique identifier is one two three four five six so that is now stored in the database on my account at Starbucks and then I can actually top up this account or pay my money to Starbucks meaning that I can use my Visa and MasterCard and I can top up for example 50 bucks so that means that when I'm paying, uh, my issuing bank will 
take the money from my accounts and transfer it to the bank of Starbucks. So now they have the 50 bucks on their account. So my value on my prepaid account has now become 50 bucks and I can then spend them somehow. For instance, they have this um, NFC reader, which is not connected to the card terminal. As we saw, that was two different entities or units. So when I'm tapping my card towards this reader, they will find out that, ah, this is the unique identifier, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the user. And they will charge my account for, let's say 10 bucks. So my new balance is now 40 bucks. So now they kind of owe me a product and they will of course give me the coffee or the cookie that I have paid for. And um, everything is kind of okay, set and done. Uh, if we look at the unique identifier on my real card, this is actually broadcasted by the NFC card when it's tapped into a reader. So what I was curious about is this, uh, what kind of security do you have on this card? Um, because you can have other pages as well. They can be encrypted in the MyFair standards. So I was wondering, are they only reading this um, unique identifier or are they using some kind of other security measures on top of this. So here I have my phone with my NFC tool installed. And if I'm reading my card now, here we have the details as I showed before. I can press the option of other and I can actually erase the tag. So let's erase it. So approach a card, it's complete erased. I can also format the memory. Let's do that as well. So now this card should be quite empty. Um, so what I did was that I went back to Starbucks as we can see from this little video and guess what? It works. I'm still able to um, charge this card for my coffee. So that means that they are actually using the public unique identifier as the only identifier to identify me as a consumer and they will charge my card. And as we can see from the recommendations from the Black Hat presentations nine years ago or in this paper about the dismantling the my first standard, the classic standard, it's pretty clear that you should not use the unique identifier as the only identifier and the security um, item or, or token to identify you as a consumer and to confirm any payment. But um, this is a closed loop system only available at Starbucks and this is quite long, this idea as well. Mm, so, so they probably have done a risk assessment and saying that, yeah, this is actually okay. Um, but I'm still kind of thinking that, yeah, there are better ways, as the recommendation says, maybe using a card that has a higher technical um, security standard, such, such as the DES Fire standards. So yeah, this was my take on how I can actually use my flipper, because since I can read uh, the Starbucks card from my flip, in my flipper, I can store it and I can emulate it. Uh, as well and which is exactly what i did uh, just going to the menu here and i have my starbucks card here and i was able to emulate it just like this and as you saw from the video yeah that worked so it's not very convenient maybe to wear my flipper compared to having this in my wallet but i was just curious how this actually works and since i have my flipper um, I've, I've been kind of scanning anything such as the ID tag of my dogs and uh, any cards that I have and so on. So that's why I think it's uh, cool to just uh, play around and learn and thinker about uh, of, of, yeah, with this device and find out how this, um, how this works basically. <laughs>